Hello everyone, welcome back to another multiplayer battle for Warhammer 2 here. I am bringing the Vampire Counts and we are facing off against some of the Dowie. For my army, I have a front line of the basic deckhand mobs. I have about like four or five of them. We also have some of these zombie pirate deckhand mobs with pole arms. Simply for the armor piercing that they bring to the table. Obviously there are no large creatures for the uh, Dowie. I guess besides maybe the Flyers. I guess the Flyers would be um, large, but who brings those? Uh, then over here we have the army being led by Solostra Direfin. We also have some of the spells, including the pirate ship. I wanted to try it for the giant pirate ship that comes out of the ground and just, you know, shoots everybody. It's kind of like a Winds of Death spell, basically. And I wanted to try that out today. And I also brought the summon for the crabs, because I think that's a pretty solid spell. So we have her, and she's being backed up by two groups of Sirens, because they have that armor-piercing damage, as well as the melee attack debuff associated with their melee attack so that's going to be our front line in the back over here we have three deck gunners because i love the deck gunners they are very long range kind of like the uh what is it the ushapti from the tomb kings and they have great armor piercing and more importantly they have shield breaker so no matter what unit they are shooting at if they have a shield or not these things basically do their full damage so i, I really like the deck gunners a lot that is the bulk of my army then back here in a Vanguard deployment, because we're fighting against Dowie, and I was expecting them to have, you know, artillery. So I had Vanguard deployed way back here. We are trying out the Morngall Haunter, which is the hero of the Morn... Well, hero Morngall that this faction can bring. Very powerful uh, against anti-infantry there, as you can see. Very low armored, but they also cause terror. They have fear. They have uh, Vanguard deployment, obviously. And they are stalking along with their other Morngalls, which we haven't backed up by a normal Morngall group here. And then I brought the renowned group of Morngalls, the Night Terrors, which also have the Hunger ability which the younger ability means that they will regenerate while in melee combat uh, but the other more goals I don't well, actually no, they have that too do you have that oh they all have that I'm sorry they all have that never mind I thought that was unique to them <clears throat> still learning the faction everybody but these ones I believe have rampage whereas the others do not yeah so these do not have rampage these do but they also have better combat stats and a lot more damage than the normal Morngalls. So I, I guess that's a trade-off. Anyway, so that's what Vanguard deployed for the Dwarven army here. We have some sneaky Bugman range. I'm sorry, sneaky Rangers over here in the forest. And then the main line is going to be set up of mostly long beards and the uh, Warriors of Dragonfire Pass. They are being led by Grom Brindle and two Runesmiths, which both have the Rune of wrath and ruin which <clears throat> my sirens may be on the receiving end of those here soon uh they also have two thunderers and then three bugman's rangers yeah three bugman's rangers in this army it's not a well i haven't played multiplayer for so long so maybe bugman's rangers are part of the meta now i'm not entirely sure but for the most part you never saw these people but it is cool they're immune to psychology and they also have regeneration along with this buff here which is i think a debuff isn't it disabled if leadership is wavering uh hit points of combatants didn't this also have a debuff to their accuracy? Or was that changed? Holy crap. I'm pretty sure back, way back in the day when I played this game in multiplayer, this also had like an accuracy debuff. It doesn't say so anymore. Hmm. Anyway, so they have three Bugman's Rangers over there, which are pretty cool. And that is going to be their army. I was expecting a, you know, artillery focused army because it is the dwarves, but they kind of surprised me here. A lot of archers. Archers are good against the Vampire Coast because none of their units have shields. And most of their units are very low armored, including their monstrous infantry. The only monstrous infantry, that, or sorry, monstrous units that they have that are armored are going to be the crabs and the crabs with the hand gunners on them, which I haven't used yet. So I may use them in the future. But anyway, our deck gunners already have a nice firing line here, trying to fire into the warriors to dragonfire pass because they have a bonus for infantry and they're just a, one of the high priority targets uh my deck is going to be switching fire between like the thunderers the bugman's rangers the front line all kind of all over the place i also forgot to mention that they have the dragonback slayer back there so right here you can see a rune of wrath and ruin being dropped on my sirens they are being shot at by one of the bugman's rangers as well but most of this damage is being done by the rune of wrath and ruin which i did not really think of when i made this build but yes uh, obviously they would bring rune smiths with rune of wrath and ruin because it's a good counter to sirens and there's a second one being dropped here from the other guy down here and with those two runes of wrath and ruin on one siren group you can see it's going to bring them down to near death again they are being hit by bugman's rangers as well but they don't have magical damage who does have magical damage though is also grom brindle who they brought and i kind of forgot that he had magical damage because again it's been a long time since i played this game uh so i'm actually going to be moving siloistra near him here we go, we're summoning the ship, it looks really cool. It just summons up and again, it's like winds of death and the cannons actually start firing and it just fires in a line. A uh, straight line and pretty far as you can see here, it's go brrrrp. It's pretty sweet. And there it goes. So that's about how far it goes. So again, it's like a winds of death, 
Though it has a very high casting time because it has to pop out of the ground and sits there for a couple seconds and then it fires. So it gives the enemy a lot of time. I was trying to clear out their entire gun line, but they moved some of the units and also I was a little off. Anyway, here finally comes some of our Vanguard deployed more Gauls. We're coming into the Buckman's Rangers. We're going to be, I think, going into the Runesmith. Yeah. So we're going to have our uh, Haunter here try and kill the Runesmith. So he's going to be working on that. So Loistro is summoning the first group of crabs to try and get into the back line. We have more Morgals coming over here. The second group of Morgals is going to be coming over here are the other Bugman's Rangers. Now they're being sneaky and these two stalking Rangers over here, because Rangers have stalk, are actually going to be coming out of the forest to start putting some fire on my deck gunners, which I was not expecting. But they will be, there they go, right there. So they're going to be doing some damage to my deck gunners in the back, so we'll try and view it from here so you can see what's happening in the background. So Lustra summoning also the one group of damn Knights Errants. Again, we're just trying to silence all of these archers and thunderers in the back line. We're doing a decent job, but I mean, there are Dragonback Slayers back here and I don't really have much interference for them. They are currently over here. They were fighting the Morngal Haunter I believe but they are now pulled back to try and silence the Damn Knights and Errant and this group of Morgals this group of Morgals is trying to get into the Thunderers. The Thunderers are heavily armored as compared to the um, Bugman's Rangers so I'm like you know what let's try and take out the Thunderers first so we switch over there and there goes the Knight's Arrow's uh, Rampage. Rampage is not a good thing to have. Uh, it is a negative trait but again they do a lot of damage they can't heal in melee so I like, yeah, they seem okay Kind of expensive though. But anyway, our um, Haunter now, no longer worrying about the Dragonback Slayers, is going to go back onto the Runesmith. And he is uh, kind of doing an okay amount of damage. My Deck Gunners, I think I just now noticed because I got this pop up that the Bugman's Rangers were actually back there because I was so focused up here micromanaging everything in the back, including the Damn Knights and all that. And I'm like, oh crap. So I'm going to be retreating some of the Deck Gunners and then eventually I'm just going to be like, well, we're here now. We got to do this. So we're going to just be exchanging fire back here between the, those two Rangers and my Deck Gunners. Meanwhile, over here, so Loistra, luckily, Grand Brindle did not pounce on her. He should have. Because, again, I did not remember that he had magical damage, and I walked her, like, right past him. Um, we're going to be summoning a second group of the uh, crabs here, and we're just trying to, again, wipe out the back line because of these rangers are doing a lot of damage to our Morgal Haunters, along with the Dragonback Slayers, who I've done some damage to, but they are mostly just kind of running over my Morgal Haunters. Over here, we just have some more zombie fire deck hands. Going to try and be supporting our Morgal Haunter, who is routing off the Roosmith. He's getting attacked by some Dwarf Warriors. Nothing too big. Back here again. Uh, the Deck Hunters are very low um, stats all around, including hit points. So they are actually going to lose this fight with the Mugman's Rangers. They are doing some decent damage, but this is not a situation that you really want them to be in. They do a lot of damage, but again, they have no health. So they die pretty fast. Meanwhile, over here, the second group of the Crabs, again, is just doing some work on those Mugman's Rangers. But we have more units opening up because I'm losing units. Uh, <laughs> pretty quickly here so it's freeing up some of the other backline we're going to try and get some more zombie pirates over there our morgal haunter has dealt with one of the runesmiths so he's going to go over here and try and help tie up the backline these more gauls are being destroyed by the dragonback slayers and are we are finally kind of through the front line the actually there, is, there really is no front line at this point we have units kind of everywhere some more thunderers coming back online over here eventually i'm going to move siloistra over towards this way i believe after these weapons rangers run away and again in the background you can see my three deck gunners have now been basically destroyed by those two rangers so that was a really good flank maneuver for my enemy there again just doing what we can to try and tie up the back line with the morgal haunter these morgals are all but finished because of the dragonback slayers and where are my other morgals they already died i think they already died yeah, I think the Dragonback Slayers already took care of the other uh, Morgal Haunters. The Sirens, though, have been kind of pulling their weight here because they weren't really focused down heavily by Grom Brindle, nor were they focused down that quickly by the Runes of Wrath and Ruin because of its long cooldown after they popped it on the first group of Sirens. So if you do manage to get your Sirens in combat for a while against Dwarves, hey, you know what? It turns out armor-piercing, you know, ethereal units do pretty good against Dwarven Frontlines. Who knew? Uh, but anyway, now Grom Brindle's getting in there. He's going to be finishing up the Sirens because he does have that magical damage. My deck gunners are gone, so I have no more range damage at all. All we really have is Siloistra, the Morgal Haunter, which is, actually has really been powerful. They've been taking the beating, but they do have that hunger ability, so it does kind of keep them up in when they ever get into melee. Going to be slowly kind of crawling over here, and now my other Morgals are dead, so it kind of frees up those Dragonback Slayers. I think they're going to start sticking them back on my Morgal over there. This Runesmith has now come back from routing, unfortunately, so we did not actually get to finish it off. Well, actually, no, there's our other group of Morgals. I'm sorry. They were still alive this entire time. Oh, they are still being killed by the Dragonback Slayers. That's what I was thinking of. Okay, so now they are being chased off by the Dragonback Slayers, giving this guy some time to do some damage to the Buckman's Rangers, and I think I'm going to switch them off to this Roosmith over there. But again, I have no firing line anymore, so we have a Siloistra, some basic zombies that, at this point against Dwarven Armor, are just going to be there as a roadblock, basically. Uh, these Morgals are going to be chased by the Dragonback Slayers. I can't really outrun them too, too much longer. And now here comes Grom Brindle popping down a debuff. I think he will be flashbanging this Morgal Haunter. There goes the flashbang, dropping the melee defense by minus 27. And he, they're just going to pound this Morgal Haunter just so quick. Like, he just drops at this point. He just melts as soon as Grom Brindle even looks at him. The thing melts. It's kind of crazy. 
So here we go, our other group of more Gauls are finally getting destroyed by the Dragonback Slayers, and all I have really is Siloistra, backed up by some basic zombies. I don't really have any other tools left at this point. This Haunter can't really take on Grom Brindle in 1v1, being backed up by all the, you know, everything else, and it's already taking a lot of damage throughout the course of the battlefield, or the battle. So yeah, he, he kind of dies pretty quickly when Grom Brindle looks his way. And now we just have Siloistra, and we have lost all of our morale, so she's just going to go fall. I'm like, I'm trying to cast the ship again. That's just one, you know, F you to the Dowie. One more little round of hurrah. But that is going to do it for the Vampire Counts. So a good game to Crazy Dwarf. I was not expecting an aggressive dwarf play. I was thinking that they were going to be camping. I was going to, you know, pound the cannons with the Night Terrors and, you know, crush them. Have our deck gunners just kind of go unimpeded and just shoot down everything. But this was a really good move. They had those two rangers stalking through the forest. And they managed to kill my deck gunners. Deck gunners still did do some damage, but... If they were online the entire game, I don't know if I would have won, but it would have been much closer because we have three of them just firing into the Dowie. But uh, yeah, good game. Morgul Hunter seemed pretty good as long as he's not fighting against Grom Brindle, I guess. Uh, he was doing pretty good. So Loistra, you know, she summons Nice Aaron, which is still cool. I like her, the lore of the deep. My um, pirate ship, uh, well, I forget what it's called, but you know, the giant pi ghost pirate ship uh, did not really do much. It was kind of a waste of, of magic, but that's on me. It actually is very powerful if it hits units directly. It's again, it's like a winds of death that just crushes people pretty quickly. But I just kind of did not aim it correctly, and they moved away too. Um, yeah, again, good game to Crazy Dwarf. Hope you enjoyed, and let's go watch the cinematic view. Overall, I've been pretty impressed with the uh, sirens. I, I really like them. I didn't think I was going to. Obviously, they're easily countered by magical damage, but if your opponent doesn't bring them, I, they, they are pretty solid. For sure. I like the melee debuff that they have. There goes that first Rune of Wrath and Ruin. Oh my god, those, those poor sirens. The Bugman's ranges, man. Just was not expecting that. See these sirens puke on some people. The Dowie are not afraid of no ghosts. Deck gunners just pounding away. Oh, Grom Brindle, you are like the best. That looks so. The deep spells look so cool. Looks so very cool. Like all of them. They did a really good job with the animations for these. Uh, the, the lore of the deep spells, that is. Like, look at these summonings! Like, they just, they're all so cool! It's like, blah, we got crabs. Normally, not a good thing. You don't really want crabs. But in this game, you do. So tanky. And I just, I love Siloistra simply for the fact that she can summon Ghost Cab. It sucks that it was nerfed down to one. I think that was a good call though. But I really did enjoy when she could summon two of these. <laughs> for that very brief moment in time before the patch shift. Here we go look at these Morgals. So spooky. Looks like that's a Rune of Wrath and Rune being thrown on them there. The Morgal Haunter. Hunter? Haunter? Just blah. Something's up with her jaw, it's just not natural. I haven't really seen her attacks. Let's watch her for a bit. I usually bring her on a giant Leviathan, so I don't actually see what her animations are. So cool. It makes the Vampire Co. summoning seem so dumb. It's like they just pop out of the ground. That's so last year, you know? We're all about summoning from the water now. Alright, so she's your fan. 
It's like Zhu Galeon from Dynasty Warriors. That it? Well, she really does. I thought she had some kind of AOE attack that she does. Maybe it's that one that where she just dives through people. Alright, alright, that was pretty cool. Oh! There it is! Okay, yeah, alright, cool. I was told she has an AOE attack. That looks pretty cool. Nice. That's pretty cool. Meanwhile, the rest of our army getting totally destroyed. The last deck gunners. Aw, oh, you poor bastards. You got him. <laughs> oh man, I think the thing was just chopping on a dwarf right there. Gosh, just look at the way they move. Oh, you're so creepy. I wonder if that actually makes them harder to hit. Because, like, you can see some shots are going over them. Because they're just, just so low to the ground. Hmm. I didn't really think about that. That's kind of interesting if it does, though. I mean, obviously it does. Some shots went over their head. Oh, shit. Marisma's coming. Oh, man. Granddaddy Grom Brindle coming. He's had enough of this of this haunter over here. He's gonna give him that old Grom Brindle flash. Now what you're thinking about, you lewd people. Get those thoughts out of here. Flash bang! This haunter was like, what the fuck? What is this? It hurts! Ooh! He's got one saw hit against Grom Brindle, yeah, that's right. Didn't go down for free. Is that the Rune of Wrath with Rune on him? Huh. But yeah, he's... I guess we can watch his dying animation. It has one. Alright, it has one. <laughs> it's pretty quick. And then Poise to Lustra, left alone. And then she's like, oh. I think she just falls to the ground when she's dead. Oh, that's kind of... She's doing like... Is she, okay, she's sucking on her thumb. I was gonna say, is she doing that like, oh, I'm about to faint? You know, like, oh, I got the... I got a faint. And you put your hand to your forehead and you... You know, it's all dramatic. Maybe that's what she's doing, but right now it just looks like she's sucking her thumb. Listen, she didn't... She hasn't really matured much, you know? In the hundreds of years she's been dead, she's... She's kind of reverted back to a more childlike state. She just wants to suck her thumb. All right, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you all next time. Take care.